What's up? What's up? What's up? Pulling up now to see my buddy Thomas Arnold. Really, really unique, interesting guy. So, give me one second to get set up here and we'll be able to have a chat with him. I think you guys will dig him. Can I get you a beverage or anything, bro? I get some water. Do you? Grab a sit down here. Thanks, bro. Trying to do a little interview on my vampire. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what have you been up to, man? Just making jewelry, man. Yeah. All the time, dude. Dude, I didn't know you were a veteran. Yeah. What branch were you in? I was in the Marine Corps. Were you? Yeah. Fucking A, bro. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for your service, bro. Yeah. So this is one of the things I love about Thomas, man. He'll never, ever just tell you stuff to get recognition or glory. Like everything, this dude does so many things, it's amazing. And literally, I just found out he was a veteran as we're sitting there talking. It's just the kind of dude he is. You know, you ask the questions, he'll be honest and tell you anything. I was in, I was at Pendleton. Were you? Yeah. Yeah, I was in First Recon Company. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Fucking A, dude. Yeah, that's what I did when I was right out of high school. Um, but I went into wrestle. So yeah, I thought I was going to be on the wrestling team there. But then... Did you wrestle in high school and stuff like that, yeah. too? Yeah, I was a wrestler, oh, too, cool. dude. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah I grew crazy. up with it, with the sport. Where at? In Colorado. Colorado, is that where you're from? A suburb of Denver. Not a little anymore. But that's well, little. What suburb? Arvada. Arvada, okay. My brother's living up in... Uh, the new section of Commerce City. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. That's where he's at right now. Yeah, that's going. That's sweet. Yeah. So this thing, yeah, I sold my house. I had that house on Copper Basin, and I sold it and uh, bought this. Dude, and been just <laughs> cruising cool. around, hitting all the, you know, national parks and going to like cool festivals. Descent on Van was a big van meetup. Went there. That'd be cool if you can ever make it, or if you want me, if you end up getting some jewelry that you want sold. Like they set up, they have like a market, like a flea market really? type thing. So they'll set up there and if you ever want to go up there. And... That might be cool. I mean, I've been, I, because I sell to a couple of people, that's all they do. Yeah. They just, they're kind of like brokers. That's awesome, man. You know what I mean? They buy this jewelry because it's kind of like, a, it's worth money. Yeah. And then they resell it. And they Are you it using kinda... coin silver for yours? Sometimes. Or, yeah? Cause yeah. Because it, it's got, it's got that like that vintage quality to it you know what i mean that rustic look to it and i think that's huge right now you know but it's like at the same time it's like polished and refined too you know what i mean like, yeah and it's cool because i've seen when you first started doing it when you were doing all the concrete yeah and all the laying the rocks and the and you're doing flagstone for a while yeah. i saw i was following you when you were doing all that stuff and then you just hit the road dude out of nowhere you're gone <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then I think you got that horse trailer on that. Yeah, I I got I wanted to have this mobile shop. Yeah. The idea of that miniature, and I did. Well, my truck broke in Cortez, or no, in uh, South of Cayenta. Yeah, that's right. So then, I got it towed all the way to Cortez, and then it cost a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there, I had a cool ride with the dude, but I just sold it because it wasn't didn't have enough truck didn't have enough uh power to pull that the weight of that all with tools and all the shit i had in there yeah so i sold it and then ended up just being in mancus colorado I, my wife and i now we just you were there, there for a while nine huh? months yeah we just like stuck it out and my son zephyr was born there nice and then we, we decided to come how old is he now one he turned one in september nice i didn't realize how many people knew you around this town here yeah, like uh, I'm, yeah. I, I saw somebody out in Chino and I was like, oh, I'm going to go talk to Thomas Arnold. So what's really funny is the person I was talking to knew exactly who he was. And even people in different cities and states will know who he is. And you're about to find out why right here. 
man, everybody knows Thomas Arnold. I got cousins calling me because he went to Mexico. He walked with his donkey, Hercules. How long did that take you? Well, I, I think, I mean, if you walk straight through, you can get there, like, if you just booked it. Or consistent walking, you can probably get there in 30 days for sure. But I took my time because I get getting sidetracked by all the... The media and stuff? Well, yeah, people? the media wasn't so much. Like, in the city, like, in Scottsdale and, like, with the media and stuff, it wasn't too much. But, like, because everyone was really cool there, too. Like, the cops uh-huh. in Scottsdale were, like, the nicest cops I met anywhere. And it was so odd. Yeah. So they kind of made it easy, you know? And then, plus, when you're a veteran, when it comes down to it, and the, they really start talking to you, you know? And then they're looking at you like, is this bro crazy? Yeah, right. <laughs> and then, like, I'm like, no, dude, I'm, I know what I'm doing, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, like, I, w- I wish more people like, were Whoa. like that in general, you know what I mean? They're just like, cool, go ahead, man. Yeah. Just, you know, good luck. You almost had to call the first blood on them, bro. Well, you had to a lot. <laughs> the veteran going yeah, through the town. Yeah, that's all you got to do. It's like, hey, man. That's how Rambo started. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, kind of uh, kind of set a boundary with it sometimes. Uh-huh. Just to, and then usually law enforcement people are like, all right, man, like, good luck. Most of the time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, so I took, like, probably over a month. I meandered. Went, as soon as I got out to the reservation, like, as soon as I was, like, I entered the res in Sacatone area. Uh-huh. And as soon as I was on, then time, the whole thing slowed down. Yeah. And people were like, come over and eat, you know? Yeah. Hey. Dude, I love Sacatone, dude. Like, yeah, that's too. one of the... Like, I grew up, like, I most of my time growing up was in Casa Grande. Mm-hmm. So I was in be- between two reses, you know? Yeah. yeah. I've been there a couple times because I went back and, re- you know, police really had an effect on me, like Sacatone and uh-huh. those people there. And I had these trippy experiences, and everything got trippy there. As yeah. soon as I hit Sacatone, I was like, then the trip got weird. At yeah. first it was, like, the mountains and, you know, and I, Scottsdale, but it was interesting because I got to the city and then it was... Once I got to Native Country, it was a lot different. And no more media, and so it was just all personal, like, like so many selfies. Yeah, right. Dude, with so many people, like, yeah. side of the road, like, yo, this is like... I think one of my cousins was one of those. That's why I was sure. telling you, he got hold of me. He's like, hey, you know that guy? I'm like, oh, yeah, Thomas. He just walked through here. I was like, what's he doing? Because I didn't know you had left. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> he's walking to Mexico. I'm yeah. like, what? I, was I like, just had the idea. I was like, I bet I could... You and I read this National Geographic article about a dude that was going to walk from Africa out, like, you know, kind of mimicking human evolution. Yeah, migration Migration and stuff. stuff. And he, he like, he, like, buckled within, like, a little while, you know, and I was like, dang, what's up with that? But then I, I thought, how far could I go? But I walked, I walked three months total, you know, the trip was three months but there was some parts where I was just like on lockdown you know, yeah I didn't really go anywhere sick well, or, what were you doing for uh bedding and stuff did you have a bedroll with you or I anything? just slept on on the um saddle pads and saddle pads and so I laid them out uh-huh. and then put the saddle up and then he could be loose and, on his pads and then in Mexico and Hercules I, was yeah. good and Hercules was good I mean I learned a lot about the saddle um in my gear from like the Mexican cowboys, yeah. they straightened me out like right away. Like, you need more padding and like less bulk, like you know, it's too much like leather and all. You know, yeah, they were like, dude, you gotta like reduce this down. It was interesting, yeah, that was interesting. That's when, like I said, everything got pretty. The trip got deep there. Mm-hmm. It was like just like this adventure up to that point, kind of funny. A little bit funny. I mean, Scott Sale is pretty hilarious, you know, yeah, dude, it shit. is, yeah, dog, but. <laughs> But with Sagatone, it got like you know, then, right away. Then too. it turned into that vision quest. That yeah, right at the gas station on the border. Uh, yeah, right one of our mutual friends, Dana, uh, is an art instructor and an amazing artist, and uh, he loves to draw the animals at my mom's property. She's got a, a horse. She had the donkey. She has about half dozen goats, like twenty chickens. If you ever need to eat eggs, man, you just oh, cool. let me know. She's always got too many, and then. Uh, so Dana went over there and was, was sketching him, and the donkey kept looking at him like, so Dana would turn it, and, and he'd look at it, and then he'd go back, almost like he was posing, dude. <laughs> and so Dana would keep going and showing him, donkey would look at it, 
and Dana, and then Dana would take a break and go play, uh, draw a different animal, dude, and Nacho would get mad, dude. He'd kick, <laughs> bam, he'd start <laughs> kicking the fence, and Dana would come back and be like, all right, all right. <laughs> he liked the attention. <laughs> and then when Dana was done, he showed it to Nacho, and Nacho looked at it and goes, <laughs> and Dana was like, did you see that happen? Did you see that? <laughs> He's like, he just told me to go back to art school. He, did, he was not impressed. Like, Dana was so upset <laughs> by Nacho's response. <laughs> yeah, they, and, don't, they don't pull any punches. Dude, and then he bit Dana's shoulder and elbow, too. <laughs> and I was like, he could have crushed his shoulder if he wanted well, he knows to. They know their plan. Yeah. Like, Hercules and I, by the end of the Mexico trip, by the time we had to load the last trailer to get out of Nogales and get back to Prescott, we were both at our end, you know? Yeah. Like, we were both just like, I was sick and skinny, and he was been in locked up, and he had guts, and where all the flies had eaten him because he was in the, the stockyards for too uh -huh. long. And, you know, he killed you so much. Yeah. But by the end of it, so we were just kind of like, you know, brawling. Anyway, we... I was stressing out. I was losing my shit, and I was trying to load him in one of the trailers. So hard to load him in a trailer, you know. And the cowboys were doing all their tricks, these Mexican dudes, and then they were like, I don't know what to do, you know. Like, he's a tough one, you know. And I was like, fuck. And I got him in there, like <laughs> wrestling style, like there yet. And I just like, you get in there. And we got in there, and we fell down. And so Hercules and I fell down. And I remember falling to the edge, and I was like, I'm going to get hurt real bad, you know? <laughs> and he started kicking the wall right next to my face. I mean, like, hard. Boom, boom, boom. And these barqueros were like, damn, you know? <laughs> and I mean, it scared. It just scared me so bad, you know? And I, I just was still like, and then I stepped away, and they were like, he, he could have killed you, and he, knew, he knows it. Yeah, and he I just like, wanted to scare you. Yeah, a complete accuracy. Yeah, and he's trying to, just, and so that was like three of the fights we got in. But you know, I was like, but he loaded in. You know, we got in, but it, it went from like four hours to like two hours to like got him in once an hour and a half. Yeah, like, I just need to get out. Yeah. What about uh, what ended up happening to Hercules? I know. You well, had to... well, I went back up here, and then we walked again, and I took this girl. It's another whole crazy adventure. The second journey south is a whole chapter two of it all. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to write all this down at some point. Yeah. But I gotta make money. I don't know. Let's not give too much away on the yeah. story, you know? Well, it's just, yeah, just like, that's a whole second trip, you know? But how, anyway. how about we don't say anything about Hercules then and let, uh... Oh, no, that's that, okay. Yeah, you good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I think there's enough depth of story is like, it's good to share because, like, then I'll, try, I'll remember better. Yeah. Like, I just think at some point in my life, it would be a good, you know, cool... To write it story. down. Yeah, a lot of... Down. I think you should, or man. Some, I, I just want to get some time. I, you know, it's such an endeavor. Like, and it was such a big trip in, it, in so many ways, not just, like, as the adventure part, but culturally. Yeah. And, like, my own spiritual beliefs and, like, um, just getting, you know, mortality issue, you know, realizing that and, like, all kinds of scared taught, taught you life lessons that you couldn't learn any other way probably yeah like took like even well beyond like the military stuff just yeah. like like that kind of being out there like that so anyway that was there's enough too where I could write I think for a long time but, yeah but yeah no I like telling the stories because it's like they're good yeah like, they're like it's the coolest shit I've ever done yeah like, so far, I'll look back at that and, like, way cooler than anything I ever did in the Marine Corps. I mean, I did some cool stuff, but that shit it was, it was awesome. And it was, like... And so, like, what are you doing now? Like, I know, but just for everybody else, your jewelry. Yeah, doing Tufa Cast Silver Jewelry. Like, and what's your website and stuff so we can have people go to it? And my Instagram is Kindred Spirit Jewelry. Like, K-I-N-D-R-E-D... D R E D, yeah. kindred, yeah. spirit. Yeah, kindred spirit jewelry. Okay, I I'm I follow you on there. I just yeah. want for them to be able to. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's how it is. Okay. And so, I, if there's yeah. something they like, they can order it. Right now, you've been doing a lot of custom stuff. You said so. You don't even have a lot of like stock right now, right? No, it's all custom. Right yeah. Now. Um, I I have been trying to build up one. I kind of try to rotate through like customs to the wholesale orders I have. Yeah. <coughs> And then rotate in uh, a stock, 
Yeah. Do you have your stuff in any stores right now that you've been... Yeah, in downtown Prescott, I have a few things slowly building up in Southwest Sounds and Cycleery. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bike shop. And he's yeah. not on Instagram or the web or anything, but... That's a cool little shop, it's though, man. It's cool, and, and... I like... I used to go there and buy CDs from him, because he had all cool reggae stuff that yeah. you can't really find it anywhere else, you know? Yeah, totally. Does he still have CDs and he stuff? He does. There? They're still in there. Dude, no one buys them. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Might have to go buy some. But, yeah, he's been letting me put some art in there and then he's been making some art some bike art oh nice and doing some stuff on his own welding or something like that yeah or? like little little sculpture actually it's kind of oh, sweet yeah these little like really simple sculpture bike sculptures that he likes and so we've both been kind of putting our stuff up slowly more as I get be trying to turn that into potential for if I can ever build enough stock to have like a show like you know like on it, you know, in the evening or something, you know, like that. Yeah. Like, but um, that's where it is right now. But for, but I have a catalog down there. Nice. Of the pics of it, so if people are there, they can get an idea. And then basically, I'm so buried in orders that I, I just like, I just add it to the list. I'm like, nice. Every once in a while, I have some that's pieces a, available. That's a know. really good problem to have, though. You know. Yeah, it's it is. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, bro. Cool. Well, that's it, man. Cool, man. Thanks. Appreciate you doing yeah, this with me, man. Meeting up with me and... Yeah.